Good morning, everyone. We are from Group 5 IKK Podcast. And today we are going to talk about pathology kempundingan. So before we start, we are going to introduce ourselves. My name is Lori Tong, Nim B0419802. And I'm here with my group members, Natalie and Bula. Hello, Natalie. Can you introduce yourself? Hello. Hello, oh, my name is Natalie Yong Hoi Tong. My, na- my name is B0419-8013. Hello, everyone. Hello. Okay, hello, Bula. Can you introduce yourself too? Hello, my name is Bula Kwan Quincy and my name is B0419-8032. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. So guys, we have learned pregnancy pathology in class, right? And I think the topic caught my attention and I I had did some research and reading on my own. So I want to share with you and have a discussion. Are you up for it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Same. Okay. Good. Okay. So I will start off with Mola first, which is the... um, the main, the main, the main reproductions pathology in um, pathology computingan. Okay, so what is molar? So molar is the state of defects or abnormalities of the embryo. When in the molar state, the embryo dies and disintegrates at a very young gestation, gestational age. However, the placenta continues to grow and develop well even in irregular shape. Um, I want to ask, are there any types of mola? Um, if yes, do you know what are the types of mola? Yes, there are a total of five types of mole, which is the English word for mola, mole. Okay. So there are a total of five types of mole, which are mole cystica, mole hidatidiform, mole villosa, mole sanguinolenta, and lastly, mole canosa. So firstly, mole cystica. So mole cystica is actually when the state of the placenta continues to grow and develop, and it leads to the cyst formations and the outside of the placenta is irregular in shape. Next is mohidatidiform. So mohidatidiform is a pregnancy or conceptus, conceptus in which appears as a cluster of great light translucent cysts or relief really of the placenta in great form. And it occurs due to the damage of chorion, which can disrupt the surrounding tissue due to a very progressive growth or development. And if it's left untreated, it can become a malignant tumor. And next we have more villosa. So more villosa is an uncontrolled development of chorionic really. And next we have more sanguinolenta. So more sanguinolenta, or we call it more blood, is where the embryo is dead, accompanied by bleeding, but the color of the blood is pure. And lastly, more canosa. So more canosa is actually like a meat shape. Oh, then do you know what is the diagnosis of the molar? So the diagnosis for molar um, is actually difficult to be diagnosed. It can only be diagnosed by performing a laparotomy or endoscopy so that it can identify the shape of the molar. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I also have one, uh, uh, another pregnancy pathology to discuss also. Uh, I've read about uh, mummification also. Is, mummification is one of like the gestation, gestational accident that's caused by intrauterine death of uh, fetuses, which typically occurs during the fourth, fifth, and sixth month of pregnancy. Uh, mummification uh, can be classified into two types. 
First one is bovine hematic mummification and papyrusius mummification. So I'm going to talk about the first one, the bovine hematic mummification. So uh, it's a form of mummification that exclusively, that means uh, it's on, it only occurs in cows and can occur anywhere between the third and eighth month of gestation. Uh, there is no, there, there are no uh, evidence that they have an infectious organism uh, associated to the bovine hematic um, mummification. So as a result, uh, the, whole, the whole condition is aseptic and sterile. Yeah. Uh, so the uterine wall are thick and no cotyledon can be felt. So, and then the uterine artery is tiny and there is no fermitus. This condition is distinguished by a failure of estrus and persistent corpus luteum. Oh, so how do you diagnose the mummification in cattle? Oh, okay. Good question. So the it, it can be identified through rectal palpation. Uh, so the rectal palpation uh, is difficult to determine since the uh, precise the precise uh, timing of the fetal death is unknown. So the clear sign are dry and hard like stone fetus, no fermitus of uh, artery uterina media, and estrus and corpus and persistent corpus luteum. So the treatment for bovine mummification is to expel the mummified fetus by uh, giving the estrogen uh, combination with a combination of what? Uh, oxytocin to stimulate the uterine contraction and then the other one is to uh, administer the prostaglandin uh, to stimulate the parturition uh, and then to remove the CLP which is corpus luteum persistent is a very dangerous uh, as it can uh, damage the ovary so it's not recommended to do that then the horse, pig, dog, and cat uh, can undergo papyracious mummification. This is the next topic already, the next uh, under mummification one. So it is distinguished by the death of one of the twin fetus. That means uh, there's twin in one, there's twin in an animal, and then one of them dead, or both dead. Yeah, in a, in a it, it's called multi multiparious animal with the remainder of the growing normally. And then uh, in a lack of infection and air, the fetus will get dehydrated. It will become very dry. It will become brown also. And there is no sign of placenta bleeding. Uh, yeah, the fetus become brownish with no odor or pus. It is easily removed during the parturition alongside with the usual fetuses. So uh, you don't have to give uh, any drugs that like, will come out eventually. So other than mummification, there are other pathology is somewhat similar where both uh, involve in uh, fetus death, which is maceration. So uh, one of the symptoms of fetal, fetal death is fetal maceration. Uh, after the third month of gestation, the fetus is dead and begin to disintegrate. So because it involves germs and breakdown, it will. It is a harmful septic process. That means it's not uh, sterile. It's not sterile. That's why they will have infection very easily. As a result, uh, the fetal bone and a portion of body body hard tail are visible. The de the degradation damage the tissue and em and emits a very smelly odor. So it's very uh it's very easily to recognize it because they give out very characteristic uh smell. And then the the only microbe that can be found in the uterine fluid is corn, corn bacterium pyogenes. So there are two, two, uh, two procedures to examine this, uh, this patho, this pathogen, patho, pathology, uh, is to, uh, by by vaginal and rectal palpation. So the per vaginal procedure. Per, per vaginal procedure is involved by using two thumbs to open the cervix canalis, cervicalis, and then the bone can be felt in the uterus because maceration is uh, because the fetus bone is already, is the fetus already become bone. 
That's why it's very easy to fill the, fill the bone in the uterus. And then per rectal technique is to use to obtain uh, asymmetrical uterine horns and gas crepitation due to the presence of fetal bone. Yeah. That's all. What about you, Bula? Thank you, Natalie, for the sharing. That's very informative. So I have read about the super fecundation a few days ago. So super fecundation is the fertilization of two or more ova from the same cycle by sperm from the separate act of sexual intercourse. So the, the term super fecundation comes from a Latin word where super means above or beyond and fecund means fertile. And there are two types of super fecundations. Oh, so what are the two types and what is the difference? So the two types of super fecundations are homopaternal and heteropaternal. So the homopaternal super fecundations is the fertilization of two separate ova from the same father. And the heteropaternal fecundations occurs when a male mates with two or more males, resulting in the fertilization of two or more ova from the same cycle, from separate act of conceptions. So this kind of uh, super fecundations normally happens in polytoxic animals, such as dogs, cats, and pigs. So uh, I also did some research about the super fetation. So superfetation is a reproductive phenomena that is said to occur when an animal shows signs of, signs of estrus and is made during pregnancy so that the second pregnancy occurs in addition to the previous one. Therefore, there are at least two fetuses resulting from the different ovulation cycle and conception times would be presented in the uterus at the same time. So this condition normally happens in animals such as rat, rabbit, monkeys, cats, sheep, pigs, and so on. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, okay. Uh, so I have read about an article about super uh, superfetation. So superfetation has been induced artificially in a few cases. In 1954, Hafez and Pincus used asynchronous embryo transfer in the rabbit to produce superfetation by transfer uh, trans transplanting the 3.5 days old embryos to the left horn of the recipient at different intervals after mating. So the left oviduct of each recipient was removed surgically and decidioma formation was induced by the mechanical stimulation, uh, me mechanically stimulating the left uterine horn with a sterile prop. So the embryos implant was successful that was successfully when transferred up to six days after mating or we can say 2.5 days after asynchronous. So the parturition occurs at the same time for synchronous and asynchronous young in the recipient. That allows to the complete of the pregnancy. Oh, I see. Wow. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing. It's very interesting. So, and thank you for listening. I hope you have learned, learned a lot from us and, our, and we ourselves learn a lot from each other too. So, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>